Well, hello again, everybody, and welcome to a very special edition of the Experience Maker Show. It's finally here. It is launch day, September 14th, 2021, a date that I have had circled on my calendar for what seems like a century, but it's finally here. It is the launch date of the Experience Maker, how to create remarkable experiences that your customers can't wait to share. We got it in both hardcover and in paperback, so choose your poison. Uh, also in ebook, and I know you folks that want an audio book, it will be here by the end of the month. You gotta wait another couple of weeks, but the audio book will be here soon. So today I wanted to do a special live stream to both celebrate the launch and also uh, create a remarkable experience for you, the audience, by showing you uh, some skills that I've developed over the years that had nothing to do with customer experience directly, but which I thought would be fun. And also to invite some friends onto the show uh, to just chat with us and, uh, and kind of celebrate with me. So uh, I have a couple of friends already in the waiting room and I'm gonna get to them in just a second. So hang tight guys, I'll get you guys on in just a second. And if you're watching, uh, please leave a comment, ask a question, uh, would be happy to have you come on as well. And again, we're gonna do some talking with some friends and then I am going to do some bartending for you. So a little known fact, uh, at my first job in college, uh, while I was working full time, I went to bartending school at night, had the most fun. Man, I recommend it to everyone just for the fun of learning how to make drinks. And uh, while I only spent a couple of months doing any sort of professional bartending, it's a skill that I have kept up all of these years. And so I'm gonna make a couple of fun drinks uh, as part of our show today. But first I wanted to invite on a couple of people who are again, great friends, supporters, uh, folks who are in the field who uh, I just love uh, being friends with, uh, sharing knowledge with, and and certainly learning from. So I am going to put all three of these all-stars on the screen. We've got Shep Hyken, we've got Jeannie Walters, and Mitch Jackson. Welcome, guys. It's good to be here, Dan. Hey, this yeah. is exciting, huh? So uh, very exciting, very exciting. So happy to see you guys. You, Shep's got the light up book and you've got your necklace on. Thank oh, you. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm decked out. I hope, and, that, <laughs> I hope I'm not overdressed. Outstanding, that is great. <laughs> Look at that so, thing yes, blinking. They are, uh, they are flashing the limited edition light up version right. books. Uh, I'm sorry to say those are not for sale. Um, that's why they're limited edition. Um, and I guess, Jeannie, did I read correctly in your post that you got number 100 out of 100? Look at that. So yes, these I did. Completely, these wow. were randomized. You were not the last person on my list by any stretch of the wow. imagination. We just printed out the labels. I put all the all the books in boxes, and I had no idea who was getting what number, with one exception, which I'll tell you about in a moment. But everybody else got you just got a random number. So I think you got a cool one, Jeannie. Cool. Oh, you're on mute. I, I think I did. I think it's a an, a good omen. Wasn't Absolutely. that a fun box? Wasn't that a fun box to get That's you guys? A, I mean, talk I to us about the experience with just getting the book. <laughs> well, you so know, cool. I'll tell you. Mitch, my feeling was if I was going to send a book about creating experiences to a bunch of influencers, uh, I couldn't just put it in a yellow envelope. That just wasn't going to do it for this book, right? It's nothing against anybody putting stuff in yellow envelopes. It just wasn't going to work for this book. And so I really wanted to show what being an experience maker looks like. And uh, luckily, I think th what I feel proud of is that I was able to impress people like you who have been creating experiences for so long and who really know this stuff. Uh, and so I think that that was a success. You did. You got quiet over there, but you got your box. Okay. <laughs> this nice. is what it looked like. It came in here. I got the light bulb. Um, this is the best. And I uh, got, you know, of course, and then th these are awesome little, uh, I, I mean, they're just fun little pieces of, I, like the light. I don't know, Dan Genghis memorabilia. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've tried a couple times to show this pen on a live stream, and it's really hard because I've got too much cool. light here. It's very but cool. It's got the logo yeah. that comes out of it. It's so cool. It is yeah, cool. it's like the, it's like the bat signal, and it uh, it shines the logo. So if you ever need the inspiration to uh, to create an experience, um, you can just kind of call the experience maker. Isaac, thank you so much for watching. Uh, really appreciate you being here, um, uh, folks who are watching. Please feel free to identify <laughs> yourself and leave a comment. Um, so thanks for being here. Um, so Dan, can I say something real quick? 
I was just going to so, go to you, so please. Well, I, I was just going to say you were just holding up the laser pointer, and when the box was opened up at my house, downstairs on the kitchen table, all that stuff disappeared immediately. Everybody <laughs> grabbed it and ran off, right? Somebody's shining the laser printer, the laser marker thing over on my shirt. I said, I have a feeling there's a little bit more to that than, than what we're seeing right now. Shine it up on the wall. I just, I honestly just realized there's more to that initial impression that the rest of the family had. And it yeah. looked like the bat signal, which was, which was amazing. And very cool. The book cover, you guys, just the limited edition, when you open it up, the light comes on the cover and it's hard to see on live video, but it's just it's you when know, you close it, Mitch, when you close it, the light comes on when you close it. Yeah. What a, what a unique, you know, uh, attraction, you know, immediately I'm like, wow, this is different. And that's really, really cool. And Dan, it's just something where, you know, the experience of just getting your book, the experience of I can't wait to share this with everybody in the law firm and everybody in my on my digital and social communities, because as you and I and everyone here knows, it's all about the, the customer and client experience, you know, all else being equal. Right. And I can't wait to dive into the book to put a lot of your techniques and approaches to use. And I've already, by the way, I've already created a couple of gifts and we've already shared this out on social media, Dan. So we're really excited for you and congratulations on what looks like just a fantastic book. Well, thank you so much, Mitch. From um, one bartender to another, here you go. <laughs> there you go. Cheers. Um, Cheers. I do want to tell you, I got to do a speech to a, a, a bunch of lawyers at a law firm and I got to use the line, there's no law that says you have to be boring. <laughs> I, got a good, I got a good laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so and, uh, to your point, one of the things you talk about in the book is that example of of uh, taking something as boring as a disclaimer and making it interesting enough. Wasn't that cool? Yeah. That people actually want to read it. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, who reads disclaimers? Nobody does, but that's because they're boring. Mm -hmm. um, I Tell also us what you did. Give us, give everybody an example of what did, what did the example, what's that example? Uh, so there is a one of my favorite examples is a company out of uh, Malaysia called iFlix. They're kind of a Netflix competitor and uh, they have, like most people have, um, a disclosure at the end of their email. And Mitch, you can explain to us why we need all of this. But basically it says, you know, if you're the unintended recipient of this email, you got to delete it or shred it or we come take your children or whatever it says. And nobody reads those. But their disclaimer starts with the words all in capital letters covering our butts. Now, yep. that got me to read the disclaimer, and the whole disclaimer is hysterical. It looks like a, a, a lawyer and a marketer or a lawyer and a comedian walked into a bar and came out with that disclaimer. And so it just changes the whole, it flips the whole concept on its side because it gets it, to, it, gets it so people actually want to read it, which, yep. Mitch, correct me if I'm wrong, that's what the lawyers want is they want people to read this <laughs> stuff and understand. You know, it. we want it to be out there, but I think the important part about that, Dan, is it gets every, other people talking about what your work product. You're going to have mm -hmm. a bunch of lawyers sitting around at lunch. Did you see what XYZ did with respect to that disclaimer, that was amazing. It was not only entertaining, it was effective, it was legally binding, and he or she or they have the whole legal community talking about them. And we're just still like, talking about it today. We're still that's talking right. about it today. I think that's just amazing. Exactly, exactly. Hey, Randy, thanks for Randy. being here. Um, I also oh, want to jokes. Uh, <laughs> take a step back and, uh, and give credit where credit is due. The light bulb in the front of the book actually came from my daughter, who was 13. And in a Girl Scout troop, uh, they learned how to create a simple circuit with a battery. And when she did it, I had this idea. The light went off in my head. And I said, could you do this in my book? And so she and her Girl Scout friends came over one day and uh, punched holes in the front of the book and attached the, the um, wiring and the light bulbs and the battery and everything. And it just worked so cool. Um, so I love that they were able to, to participate in that. Um, I'm going to see. I know I can keep bringing on people. Let's see what happens, how small we get. There's oh, there's Brian Kramer. Mr. Brian. H. Brian. How you doing, Brian? Yeah. Brian. Brian? Hey, how are you doing? Congratulations on an awesome book today. I am so excited, Dan be a part of this. Hello, Shep, Mitch, Jeannie, all of my, all of my favorite people are here. And uh, wow, what a cool thing. I love what you've done with your hair. <laughs> I do too. I know. Thanks. Wait a minute. I have one, I have one here. I feel, I feel a little out of place. 
I do too, Jeannie. Yeah, you're going to have to you work two, on that. You two are balancing us out, Mitch and Jeannie. Exactly, exactly. Well, um, you know, uh, Brian, I think what's so interesting, you know, you've been talking about H to H for a long time. And you, in my book, you were always sort of a marketing person until I realized you were actually a customer experience person dressed up as a marketing person. And because H to H is such a C X is such oh. a customer no, experience no, philosophy. No, no, Brian. Oh, <laughs> what? It's not that kind we're of show. Right, we're it's not right. a whole <laughs> new experience here. Live. It's happy hour, not after hours. Um, <laughs> so quickly, just uh, talk about H to H. What does it mean, and why is it important? Uh, well, it's it's even more important now than ever, right? Because look at us now. We're what are we human to? Uh, uh, what are we, StreamYard now? Sometimes we're human, yeah. human to Zoom to, to human, but uh, more so than ever, especially the last two years. So uh, right now with everything going on, I mean, what what do we need more than ever is connection and with with everything that we're facing uh, uh, and, and connection and, and all of the things that are going on in this world, uh, human connection is is at the center, I, I believe, at the, the center and the core focus of everything. I think that's, that's kind of what this book uh, embodies and why I'm so excited about it, because if you can make a connection that every single truth point along the way for a customer, man, you don't have to work as hard, right? So uh, that's that's uh, that's what I'm all about, and that's what HH is about is, is reaching everybody at, at that 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 core center. So um, that's what it's about about simplicity, empathy, and imperfection, and creating all that great goodness. Ooh, I, like that. I love it, and you're totally right. So much more. It's come into focus so much more in the last uh, year and a half, two years with the uh, pandemic. Um, Jeannie, I want to ask you quickly, uh, I know that you, know, you work with a lot of clients in your consulting business. In my opinion, CX has also come into a lot of focus because of uh, the last mm -hmm. two years. But what have you seen in terms of what are companies having to do now that they weren't necessarily having to do pre-pandemic? Uh, yeah, I thought this was going to be like drinking and bartending, but it's sure, no, be, let's do this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, there. I think um, there the the part that always fascinates me about customer experience in general is it's happening whether you're intentional or not, right? Like the these leaders call and they say we want to start customer experience now. I'm like, well, I I have some news for you. <laughs> this has been happening, and I think what what I've seen is this shift into being a lot more intentional about the experience that they're designing. And nothing brought that to light more than when everything shut down and people had to adapt and bob and weave in ways that they never had because they had to start with, okay, what does this really mean to the customer and how can we serve them? And I think that was actually a new lens for many of them. And so to see leaders step up and I mean, some of the, you know, digital transformation plans that were five years plus became six weeks <laughs> and they did it because they had to, because they had to serve the customer. And so I think that lens is what I'm seeing that hopefully will continue after we're through this time, whenever that will be. But I think that's what I saw the most of that actually gives me a lot of hope. I think there, there was a lot of empathy and understanding and compassion. And I hope we continue that too. And this group, can I just acknowledge that this group really represents that? Like everybody here shows up authentically in everything they do. And so I'm just thrilled that this is the group that's helping you, you know, announce this book and celebrate with you because it's such, it's so much a part of that, of showing up authentically and being memorable because of who you are, not just because of what you do. And being there well, for each other, and I I appreciate you guys so much. Um, I'll be back. <laughs> I love that. I love that line. You know, it's so interesting. Hiken, yes, you do. Oh, look at this. Shop Hiken's got a new book coming out in a week called I'll Be Back. <laughs> How to get customers to come back again and again. Shop, this is a big like week and a half here for uh, customer service books. Talk about I'll Be Back for a second. Oh, man. This is all about you, not me. But I love That's your okay. glasses. It's a preview, too. When you go to the movies, you see a preview first, right? You're, so you're right. You're right. You go to a movie, and what do you see? You see previews of upcoming movies. So here's what I would suggest. If you haven't already gotten Dan Gingis's book today, do it. And then next week, uh, and actually, while you're buying Dan's book today, just go over to I'll Be Back. Make sure if you put in the search, there you go, 
Uh, I'll be back. Add the word book behind it because apparently there's a past president of the United States that plans to come back. And there's a lot of books and I it thinks, you know, all kinds of of items that are being sold tied to his I'll be back campaign. Uh, <laughs> that said, uh, hey, thanks for the shout out, Dan. Really appreciate it. And uh, I'm excited about the book and I'm excited about your book. And I see you're already getting big traction uh, at Amazon and and even Barnes and Noble online is is uh, moving your book pretty well this week. Awesome. Well, I am uh, I'm excited to uh, to be launching a book with you. And I I want to say publicly how good of a guy Shep Hyken is because there are oh, not boy. many people on the planet that would do this. But Shep has been my mentor for a long time. You can see we're brothers from another mother. Uh, we've even been mistaken for each other a couple of times. Um, but uh, Shep's book was originally supposed to come out today as well. And when he found out that we were launching on the same day, he moved his book back a week, which is just who Shep Hike it is and such an amazing guy. So thank you, sir. Well, I appreciate it. I can't I wait to celebrate it. with you in a week. <laughs> uh, you can thank my publisher dollar. too, because I called up and said, would you mind pushing? And it was like, how many months ago did we find this out? I don't know, <laughs> seven, eight months ago. So it was not that big of a deal to push it off a week. Um, little did I know, I don't know how many books of friends came out today, but next week I have like five friends that have books coming out the same day as mine. <laughs> well, and you know what, uh, since somebody just complimented me on the transition, I'm going to transition right now to a guy that you guys, I don't think know, um, but who is another friend of mine who has a book coming out exactly the same day as yours, Chef Hike. And I want to welcome Howard Prager to the show. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm, Howard. I'm great, Dan. Hi, Chef. Hi, everyone. Hey, uh, I'm so Howard, excited. Tell us a little bit about your book coming out. My book is called Make Someone's Day, Becoming a Memorable Leader in Work and Life. So it's part management, part leadership, and part inspiration. Outstanding. And uh, and Howard and I uh, were out to drinks a couple weeks ago, and, and I'm not sure either one of us knew the other was releasing a book, and we started chatting and uh, found out that we were releasing books a week apart from each other. So that was really cool. Um, so thank you for, uh, for being here, Howard, as well. And I look forward to celebrating with you a week from now. Uh, thanks for all the comments, guys. I'm trying to catch up as fast as I can. Uh, thank you, Alexis and Amber and Amber as well, and Megan and Lindsay, uh, you guys rock. And, oh, wait a second, knock, knock. We we got Chris Straub here in the house as well. Chris. What's up, buddy? Speaking Howdy, can you guys great people? Can, can you guys hear me? We can. We sure Where can. are you? You've been traveling all day, right? I am in the Community Foundation offices. Say hi, Christina. Hi. Hey, Christina. <laughs> So I am with my uh, client of five years. This is the Community Foundation of Louisville office, and we're preparing for their record-breaking giving day that's coming up this Friday. Um, what did we raise last year? Oh, 7.7. Last year, they raised $7.7 .7 million in a 24-hour period. Um, this year, we've got, yeah, for over 500 participating nonprofits. Um, this year, I don't want to put a number on it, but it's going to be more than 7.7. .7. And uh, so it's been a little chaotic trying wow. to um, show off Dan's book at all the different airports I was flying through today. Um, I was schmoozing some of the different uh, bookstore staff in Charlotte and Greenville, um, and of course here in Louisville. But um, I just wanted to, and I don't mean to interrupt the group. You've got such a great vibe here, Shep. It's great to see you. My good buddy, Mitch, BK, always looking sharp. Um, Jeannie, it's great to see you. And, and Howard, nice to meet you as well. But um, Dan, I just wanted to say congratulations. I'm so proud of you. The book is awesome. Uh, I use it as a nightlight walking around because I got one of those special like light up books. Um, and so it's <laughs> it's just been an experience reading the book and a great experience kind of calling you a friend over the last, uh, I think we met six years ago today. We so, did. Uh, Facebook told us. Facebook reminded us it was six years ago today. Uh, you know, um, there's a theme here that's developing and I just, I can't help but point it out, which is that we are all as good as the people that we surround ourselves with. And one of my former bosses, a CMO, once told me that she intentionally surrounded herself with people that knew about things that she didn't know. And I thought that was so smart. And I love surrounding myself with other smart people who bring other things to the table. And you guys are also just great friends. And it makes doing what we do every day so much more fun to, to be doing it with, with people we like. And speaking of people I like, hold on a second. Amber, how are you? Hey, Amber. She's in her car. And oh, my gosh. 
She's in her Lamborghini. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there, Chef. <laughs> this a high end. <laughs> well, hi, Amber. Amber, your reception is this more is than terrible. empty. Oh. <laughs> I know, but I'm here and I made it. <laughs> Outstanding. Uh, well, Amber played a huge role in the launch of my book and her team uh, uh, is just incredible. Uh, helped me look good throughout of the, through all this, which is hard. So I appreciate everything that you guys did. Dan, you are the best. I was trying to tell everybody on my plane. I just got back from Austin, which is why I'm in the car. And I was trying to tell everybody on the plane to go buy this book. And they had this crazy experience where Air Force One was landing just after my flight landed. And they shut the whole airport down. It was crazy. But I was walking around like this. So <laughs> I'm happy that it's launch day. Congratulations. I'm happy to see all the people here on the line. Thank you for supporting Dan. He's incredible people. Well, thank you. And again, thank you guys for, for being such friends. Oh my gosh, the comments are still rolling in. And we're going to get to uh, to some drinks in just a moment. Thank you, Alexis. Alexis is part of Amber's amazing team. So is Megan. Thank you for uh, everything that you do, Megan, as well. You guys are just awesome. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Hey, I'm going to make my first drink, and then we can continue uh, talking. Uh, but one of the reasons I wanted to do some drinks was because I wanted to try to create an experience for all of you um, and do something a little bit different. So I'm going to make two drinks today. One is my house drink, uh, which is called a Cherry Cosmo. And one is a new drink that I've just started making a couple of weeks ago called a South Cider, which is strange because I live in Chicago and I'm a North Cider and I root for the North Side Chicago Cubs, but I happen to like the South Cider drink. So, uh, you know, I guess you can do both and, uh, and, and hopefully that's okay. So I'm gonna start with the patented Cherry Cosmo. And uh, so I've got everything kind of set up here. I have a shaker with some ice in it. Uh, the secret ingredient is going to be cherry flavored vodka. Um, I like the Smirnoff because it's real cherry um, as opposed to um, maraschino. Although ironically, we're gonna add some maraschino in there as well, but this is not cloyingly sweet. It just has a nice cherry flavor to it. Um, what was that a, word, cloyingly sweet? Cloying, cloying. Cloying uh, so put a little bit of uh, cherry um, vodka in. Uh, then you're going to want triple sec, which is basically an orange liqueur. It's usually very inexpensive. However, somebody gave me a, a small bottle of the real good stuff, the, um, mm -hmm. the uh, Grand Marnier. So I'm going to use that instead. And we're going to put about a half an ounce of that in there. You can see I'm not measuring very carefully, which is okay. Um, we're going to put a, a little bit, about a spoonful of our maraschino, maraschino cherry juice. This is going to sweeten it up a little bit and also give it some color because drinks, it is important that you uh, create color as well. That's part of the presentation. My mom always taught me that when you cook, you got to make the food look good as well as taste good. And then we're going to put cranberry juice in mm -hmm. here. And... You can tell Dan's been waiting all day to get this done. Oh, man. <laughs> this is amazing. The enthusiasm, I love and it. What chapter is, is in your is book, a... Dan, is the recipe. What chapter Sorry. in the book is recipe? <laughs> That's a different book. Uh, it's uh, a different book. Okay. Uh, right. We're going to also squeeze some lime into this because every drink is improved by lime. So we're going to do that. And now we are going to give it a little shake. We're going to make a very simple presentation with our martini glass. All I'm going to do is put a maraschino cherry on the bottom. I don't like using any sticks. Um, you know, this is an experience thing for me. Whenever I go to a bar and somebody gives me a swizzle stick, I don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. I, I like, I, 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 I got to put it down somewhere or I got to put it in my pocket. So no sticks in my drink, please. So we're just going to, Amber, you like that? <laughs> so That's we're hilarious. just going to order I am. Is it should I be a beautiful color. When we did those overhead projector presentations, yeah. anybody remember those things? Sure. Yeah. The swizzle sticks were great pointers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll save it in case that ever comes up again. Back. Right. Exactly. So here you go. We have Dan's patented Cheers. Cherry Cosmo. It's beautiful. The ladies always like it in particular. Sometimes the guys, you know, 
they feel too manly to drink this, but I do not feel too manly to drink this because it's a delicious drink. So cheers to everyone. Cheers. cheers. Congratulations. Cheers. Toast to you. Thank you. Delicious. So Dan, uh, you call that your house drink. Is that like a house coat? Is that, I mean, is that just what you put on at the end of the day? The First thing in the, the morning. House house special. Nice. Um, yes. I felt like I needed, uh, I needed a beverage. It was a house specialty. And uh, so that's what I created because it's a, a little bit different. Nice. So um, now I know, actually, um, I just came off of a live stream uh, with Phil Mershon, who you guys probably know, who is the um, uh, event coordinator for Social Media Marketing World. And he asked me on the spot to make a drink. Uh, I wasn't entirely prepared to do it, but he knew I was making drinks here. So I actually created a drink that I decided to call the Experience Maker. And uh, I'll tell you about it since I've already used up the materials. But um, there is a drink called a White Russian that is vodka, Baileys, and milk. I'm not a huge vodka fan generally, and so I decided to make um, Baileys Kahlua and milk. And I shake it up, it gets really frothy. It's like a coffee milkshake, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. And for those like my esteemed friend, Shep, who would prefer the non-alcoholic version, what I would do is I would take almond milk instead of the Baileys. I would take a little bit of actual coffee, even if you don't drink coffee, just a couple tablespoons for the flavor, and then milk, shake it up over ice. It'll be equally frothy. Pour it into a glass and it is delicious. That sounds awesome. Wow. <laughs> it is. Who needs vodka when you've got Kahlua, right? It just adds a, a little bit more uh, depth and, and dynamics to it, so. Nice. Um, all right, well, um, anybody else want to bring up a topic here before I go to the, uh, to the next drink? Thank um, you. I don't know if you can hear that, but that, that is a huge storm outside. <laughs> and oh, wow. and I've yeah, got to yeah. jump here in a moment because I've got to go home and, and take my wife to dinner. That's called, by the way, wife insurance. Uh, <laughs> and she has husband insurance too. But uh, anyway, I just want to say before I jump here, uh, congrats, Dan. Great book. Uh, I'm proud to call you a friend. You've got some great friends here supporting you. And uh, just want to say, can't wait for all of us to, I think at one point, most of us were uh, at social media marketing world. Are we going to get to all do that again, Dan? Hopefully, hopefully we'll be back yeah. there uh, at some point. Any excuse to go to San Diego, I'm I'm in, so. I'm in, all right. Twi you twist guys. my arm, Shep. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Take care, everybody. Good luck, Dan. Yeah, right. um, Thank I'm you. And everybody about week the book. And get, I'll be back. I'll take, yeah, I'll Jeff, be back. make it a remarkable That's experience sweet. tonight. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, Dan, you Dan, I got to bounce too. I'm here with my client. But um, hey, again, just wanted to say thank you so much. And Amber, it's great yeah. to see you on a live stream. I know we've traded emails 100 times here in the last couple months. Yes, so thank you for all of your great you. work as well. I feel really bad, Dan, that I don't have my copy of the book with me. Quite but right. I think, already, Amber, yeah, there you go. That's right. You've already Let's live all, streamed the book out today. All good. You know, I, I think I think we we're covered here with the yeah. uh, the books. Are you, are you feeling left out, Chris? <laughs> yeah, you only sent me like seven copies. Oh yeah, okay, there you go. Mitch has got his two, I'm sure. Just make me look like that I guy. Thank you, cute, Chris. See you later. Con congratulations, Dan. Appreciate you, brother. Thank we'll you. Talk Thanks, to you. Yeah, Thanks, Chris. Take care. Bye, guys. Dan, That's I have awesome. a question. I don't know yes, if my service is okay, but and I don't know if you tackled this in the very beginning of your show, but I would love for you to speak into a couple of the teaching points in the book that your are your personal favorites or stories that are your personal favorites to put you on the spot a little bit. I love asking authors that that question. Something interesting always comes out of it. Sure. So I think the you know, I introduced this methodology in the book called Wiser. It stands for witty, immersive, shareable, extraordinary, and responsive. And these are the five steps to creating remarkable experiences. I think the one that always lands with people the best is, is the W, which is about being witty. And since I have, I think, a reasonably decent sense of humor that borders on sarcasm, my humor and sarcasm sort of get a little bit mixed sometimes. But I really love the witty part. And so I'm always looking for it when I'm out in the world. And uh, to be witty is not to be hysterical, it's to be clever, to use language to our advantage, and to refuse to be boring, as I was talking about with, with Mitch before. So I'm gonna actually give you an example that's not in the book, just to show you that this happens everywhere. And even after I write a book, I continue to collect more and more examples. So I went a couple of weeks ago to the Traveling Van Gogh exhibit, which is fantastic. If you haven't been to it, you should check it out. Oh, I have um, tickets for that. 
Okay, really well, it's excellent. You're going to love it. And one of the things that they do is all of the signage at the exhibit uses a play on words. They put the word go into it and they spell it G-O-G-H. And in place of the O, they have a sunflower because Van Gogh is known for his sunflower paintings. So a sign, instead of it saying do not enter, the sign says do not go here, G-O-G-H. And instead of saying, here's the bathroom, it says, have to go, G-O-G-H, question mark. And there's an arrow towards the bathroom. It's so clever. And obviously, it's on brand. And it doesn't make you laugh out loud. But it, you sort of, when you get the joke and you get the wink, wink, you feel like you're part of something bigger. And I just thought they did a really, really good job. And when you talk about, you know, they call it an immersive experience. It's, they call it an immersive exhibit. So obviously that's setting an expectation. And to me, when they're even paying attention to the signs and making that part of the experience, that's what a, a remarkable that. experience looks like. So I love the witty part. I think that's, uh, that can, uh, can be a ton of fun. Um, I'll also say of all the companies that I highlight in the book and in my speeches, the one that everybody comments on, people come up to me after speeches and they say, and they mention is Chewy. Everybody's got a Chewy story. If you have a pet, you probably have purchased from Chewy and everybody comes up to me and says, I got to tell you my Chewy story. And um, I'm not going to spoil the whole story here because it's a little bit long, but in the book, I talk about Chewy writing a customer service email that I believe is the greatest customer service email in the history of either customer service or email which I know it's saying a lot. And the best part about this Chewy email is I think anyone can do it. And so that's why I share it is that Chewy is remarkable in everything they do, but they don't have to be unique. They don't have to be the only company doing that. And I think any company that uses email and customer service can be just as creative as Chewy. So that's my thought. Um, Howard, I want to turn to you for a second. Um, your book is focused uh, a little bit more on the employee and, and the manager. And I'm just wondering, uh, to put you on the spot, if you could talk maybe a little bit about the um, sort of the intersection of happy employees and then therefore happy customers. Well, and I'm going to take it one step further. And that's the big, that's the big thing that everyone is, is struggling with right now, and that's retention, right? We're all struggling with keeping keeping employees that we have. So the intersection of this is is really managers and leaders knowing what their employees need and doing it for them. It's as simple as that. It really is. Um, it's a great concept. I created a great model for it that's simple to learn. But but quite frankly, if you do something that you think will help your employee at the right time, they are going to be forever grateful. They're going to say, hey, boss, you made my day. And as a result of that, you're going to get higher productivity and increased retention. Is that totally, what you're totally right? That? Yeah. Um, Jeannie, jump in here, because I know you, you believe in that connection between mm -hmm. employee experience and customer experience, too. Yeah, I think not only the whole connection on that, but connecting the employee experience with the vision and values of the customer experience. If you talk about, we promise customers an effortless, effortless experience, and then the employee experience is full of struggle and drama, <laughs> that's not really effortless. So I think part of what is really important is reflecting who you are inside the organization to who you wanna be outside of the organization. Oh, that's totally so right. Effort. So well put, Jeannie. Love that. Thank you. We can't expect employees to provide a great experience to customers if they don't know what one looks like. That's exactly and right. The reality is most of us don't have a whole lot of really positive experiences we can lean back on because they don't happen that often. Mm -hmm. And it's very possible your employees have never really had a remarkable experience. And so right. we're asking them to provide it, but they don't know what one looks like. And so I do think that puts the onus on us as employers and managers to show them what an experience looks like so they can then translate it. So I think, you know, Howard, your book is very important. I'm excited for you next week. Um, it's going to be a big, it's a big month for, uh, for folks that I know and friends that are publishing books. Mitch, I know you're working on another book as well, um, which is super exciting. A little farther out though, correct? 
Uh, quite a bit further out. It's a lifetime of success tips, but I want to circle, and thank you for bringing that up. I've got sure. friends from all over the world contributing chapters, but I want to circle back to what Jeannie and Howard just shared, because one of the things that we're doing as trial lawyers is I mentor, I've been doing this for 35 years. I love what I'm doing, but I'm mentoring a lot of young trial lawyers. And one of the things that we're doing right now because of COVID-19 and the pandemic and the challenges that everybody's having is I'm trying to to teach young lawyers how to how to lead with empathy, both during litigation and in the courtroom, and to allow compassion to serve as their compass mm -hmm. and um, and tell better stories, but more meaningful stories, uh, taking time and attention into consideration. Having said all that, Jeannie and Howard, you just brought up something that we're going to be taking back internally into the law firm, and that is if your team members aren't walking that talk with each other, then how can we expect mm -hmm. them to do that with our clients who are, frankly, many of their lives are just flipped upside down because of what's happening to them, their businesses, wh whatever it might be. Everybody I'm representing has a big problem, right, that we're, we're trying to help them with. And so I think what we're going to do, Dan, and what I messaged you earlier today is we're going to make sure this book gets out to, you know, can you please all the into the... Kingston. All the young trial lawyers uh, who are trying to figure things out, but internally, Jeannie, especially because of what you just brought up, we're going to make sure that the employees and the team members of not only my firm, but other firms who are friends of mine, you know, buy into this philosophy and really appreciate before you, you can expect someone else to act a certain way. I think you have to lead by example and walk your talk. So I'm really glad that you brought that up. And uh, Dan, that'll probably resonate into more Amazon links being shared and more sales coming your way, but that's a good thing, right? What the heck? It's a Fantastic. great experience. I appreciate it. And that I love it. Sounds like a great idea. I'm just yeah. going to say. Oh, I like great that. Great idea. <laughs> Outstanding. Well, uh, uh, Nicholas, uh, thank you for your comment. And uh, I think I know why Nicholas Zeisler said this. And uh, I'm going to share my screen here for just a moment because uh, I wasn't quite prepared for this. But it's because Nicholas just came out with a new book. We're doing CX Wrong and How to Get It Right. Oh, wow. uh, this is an amazing book that I had the honor of writing the forward to. And Nicholas is hilarious. Uh, he is very analytical. Um, so kind of all the things I'm not, his, uh, his book is all about. I really enjoyed his book. Um, I think it's a great compliment to my book, frankly. Um, and uh, so again, while you're on the website, buying Howard's book and Shep's book in my book, buy Nicholas's book as well. And you're going to have a whole library here uh, and be just crazy smart at the end of this. So, um, so fantastic. Uh, uh, Seth, hey, man, thank you. Seth took a break from fantasy baseball for a moment to buy my book. So I really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nice. I like that. Straight to the you point there. Thank you. Great quote. Seth, uh, gonna... Danny, you got to frame that quote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> frame it. I will. Hey, Dan, so, uh, Dan, before I jump out of here, can I just come back to, you know, I had this chapter open just because it hit home for me and it's exactly what you went into. Why? Yep. Witty, immersive, shareable and extraordinary. And when I talk to uh, friends of mine that are trying to figure out social and how to make an impact with their videos and live videos, I always talk to them about something Carmine Gallo, who wrote the book Talk Like Ted, uh, shared with me. And that is, you know, when we're creating content, to be appropriately entertaining, number one. Number two, to be unique and memorable in, in what you create and how you present it, just like you did with your book and the light bulb lighting up on the front cover. And number three, making it shareable, making it something that other people will want to share, whether in real time or afterwards in recorded fashion. And I think that uh, adding your whys what is that? Is that an acronym? Is that the correct terminology? It is, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm just a lawyer, you guys, you know. <laughs> uh, I should probably know the answer to that question, but I'm glad I got it right. You know, taking that acronym into... Lawyers never ask questions that they don't know the answer to, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you think, but uh, you can tell me about that. You know, but it's, what's interesting is taking the the experience maker and some of the things that you're, you're sharing in, in the book, Dan, and applying it not only to what we're doing in court or what we're doing online or in our traditional offline marketing, but how we're interacting with our family, our friends and our neighbors, mm -hmm. you know, helping make the littlest thing a memorable experience. And I think one thing I've learned over the last 18 or 19 months uh, is it's the little experiences, those human to human connections that really do mean the most. 
And I think the timing of your book is fantastic. I think that it's going to add a lot of value uh, to our respective communities and communities thereafter. And I just want to say I'm glad you included me in the uh, in the early reading. And I can't wait to share more about this out with my community. And Dan, hopefully we can get you on a podcast or a live video show and uh, shine a big, bright light on you and all the great experiences that you're, you're sharing uh, with, with each of us and with our audiences. So I appreciate that. Well, I appreciate you, Mitch, and you define lawyers who are not boring. So thank you for okay. doing that. You have absolutely changed the, the, the viewpoint of what people think lawyers should look like or talk like or sound like. Uh, and I think that what you're doing is amazing as well. So thank you. Thank for you, my your friend. I appreciate for, that. For being all right. Friend. Thank you for Thanks, coming. Dan. Thank you, Howard. Thanks, Jeannie. It's good to meet you. Yeah, you do. All right. Take care, everybody. All right. I All right. So, um, Jeannie Howard, I'd love to give you guys a chance to give some parting words. And then I think I will um, say goodbye to you guys, say mm -hmm. a few last couple of words and, and show everybody how to make a, a, a South Cider and then uh, get out of here. So, Jeannie, you've been here since the beginning. So, let's start with you. I can't wait for the South Cider. I'm so curious. Like, what made you came up with come up with that when well, I know I you're a Cubs make... fan? I did not make up this drink. It's a real okay. drink. Um, I just, uh, the, what, the reason that I started uh, doing it is I grew mint in my garden this year. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I have, mint is a weed. And so yes. when you start growing mint, you get more it's mint good. than you could ever shake a stick at. And so I decided I needed to start making some drinks with mint mm -hmm. to use this stuff up. And the South Cider was one that I found that I really, really like. And so nice. hint, it's got some mint in it. Okay. I like mint. I'm a mint fan. But Me too. Uh, I think for parting words, I just want to say thank you for writing the book, for getting people to think about these things, because you know I'm passionate about it too. And I think that there are so many ways that we can improve the world through customer experience. People kind of think I'm lofty when I say that, but uh, I really believe it. And so I think the more we can think about these moments, the, the more we do for the world. So thanks for that. I'm so thrilled to be here with you and support you in this. And just congratulations. Well, thank you so much, Jeannie. Uh, I appreciate you. I'm so glad that we are uh, Chicago CX buddies. Uh, yes. And I will see you very soon at an NSA Illinois event. Jeannie's our new president and thank doing you. an amazing job. And uh, so looking forward to seeing you at an event soon. And we got it. We'll get Howard to sign up too, because uh, oh. Howard, uh, Howard is a, a great speaker as well. And uh, we got to get him involved in NSA. We, no pressure, Howard. We've got things uh, for you, Howard. Join us. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dan. Right. Take care, Jeannie. Bye -bye. Nice to meet you. You too. All right, Howard, it's you and me. Dan, man. Parting Dan. words. Oh, geez. Parting words is um, this isn't the end. This is the beginning. This is the beginning of of your launch of of not only the experience maker, but of all that you put into it. And as you said, you've been already collecting stories that, that supplement what's here in the book. And so I think the whole idea of being able to continue to grow, to do workshops around it, and to really emphasize how it's within everyone's power. Um, not that they should do it, they must do it today because people are hurting and they need that. They want that memorable experience. That's what what Mitch said as, as, as a lawyer, and he knows, you know, if it's memorable, it's going to stick with them. And that's what we're, you're looking to do, too. Uh, totally right. And for employees and customers, it's two of the most important constituents that we have. Uh, and so I, I love that your book is uh, it's helping us think through that with employees. My book is help, think, help us think through it with customers. Um, Thank you, sir, for being here, um, and uh, I will see you very soon, uh, probably later this week as well. So uh, take care, and thanks, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks, Dan. All right. Take care. All right. It is just me here, and I do want to also point out, I'm going to try to zoom out here, uh, back up, see if I can do this. I'm wearing my Joe Madden shirt today, Do Simple Better. Joe Madden, of course, the former manager of the 2016 World Champion Chicago Cubs, and do simple better is actually a baseball mantra. He talks about running out to running hard to first base and making the simple plays so that you can afford to make a mistake later on the more difficult plays.
But I believe that when Joe retires from managing, he's going to be a business consultant because do simple better as well as his other so-called maddenisms all apply to business. I actually wrote a blog post about this. It is the most popular blog post on my website. And in fact, if you Google Joe Madden's name, for whatever reason, I show up because of that article. But anyway, do simple better is such a great mantra for customer experience. We make things too complicated for our customers. We put too many barriers in their way, too many steps. And the more we can make things simple, the more chance we have of creating a memorable experience. All right, I promised one more drink tonight for happy hour. Here we go. This is called the South Cider. And yes, I'm a North Cider. I'm a Chicago Cubs fan, but this just happens to be the name of the drink. I didn't name it. This is not my drink, but it is one that I have learned to love, especially this summer with so much mint in my garden. So the first thing you're going to want to do is grab your favorite spirit. You can grab vodka, gin, or whiskey. And it will, I have tried it with all three and it will taste good with all three. Now I purposely grabbed a gin today. I grabbed Sipsmith gin because it is one of the case studies in my book, The Experience Maker. And Sipsmith did a really, really cool job with a tasting. And liquor tastings tend to be a little plastic cup and you shoot the liquid, which of course, those of us who haven't been in college for <clears throat> a number of years, that's not how we drink. And Sipsmith realized that that was a bad way to do a tasting and they created the most amazing tasting ever, which I describe in my book. So we're gonna start with two ounces of Sipsmith gin, and then we are gonna add uh, some simple syrup. Now, simple syrup sounds, well, it's simple, right? Because it's do simple better. All simple syrup is, is sugar water. So you basically want, you're supposed to do a one-to-one -one ratio of sugar and water. I think that's too sweet, so I usually do a, a, about a two-to-one ratio, more water than sugar. And we're gonna put about, uh, uh, half an ounce to an ounce in there. Uh, I said that everything goes better with lime, but this particular drink, we are gonna use lemon instead of lime. And so I am going to squeeze some fresh lemon juice in here. And that was not a particularly juicy lemon. So we're gonna go for a little bit more because you do want sort of this lemonade -y taste to it, which is really, really good. And then we're gonna do something that is very different, at least from a bartending perspective, and I haven't uh, done before. Is we're gonna take the entire sprig of mint, make sure that you wash it first, I've already washed it, and we're gonna stick it right in the shaker. We're just gonna stick it in there, and we're gonna put the lid on. Now, what happens is when we shake this, we are going to, in effect, agitate the mint, and it's gonna bring out the oils and the flavor of the mint without actually putting mint into our drink. So, shake, 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 shake. And this drink is best served over ice. I did have a beautiful round ice cube in here. It is now mostly melted, but I have a uh, round cube and we are gonna pour it in here. So this is a clear drink unless you use whiskey. And you're gonna see little specks of mint. But basically what we have here is gin, simple syrup, lemon, fresh lemon juice, and some mint that has been shaken into it. But again, you don't really see it. Now, if you wanted a garnish in here, if I had an extra piece of uh, mint, I might lay a leaf on top. But again, as I said with a swizzle stick before, I don't like to put stuff in that gets in the way of drinking the drink. So cheers and thank you. Mm. I tell you, I will always be a North Sider, but I'll always drink the South Sider. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all of the comments. Thanks for all the guests that stopped by, for all of the people that have helped me get to this point um, in releasing the book, my publishers at Morgan James and all of the people there, uh, Amber Vilhauer and NGNG Enterprises and all of her team, all of the people that wrote the incredible endorsements for the book. I am so humbled that the first like four pages of the book are filled with endorsements. Friends, family, uh, everybody that has supported me on this journey, I really, really appreciate you. The book is The Experience Maker, how to create remarkable experiences that your customers can't wait to share. It's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, Target.com, Walmart.com, wherever you find books, you should be able to find it. And if you can't, if you walk into a store and it's not there, go up to the front corner, tell them you want the book. They can order it for you, I promise. 
Thank you so much again for your support. Uh, this is Dan Gingas. I am the Experience Maker. And just so you know, I am live every Thursday at noon Eastern with the Experience Maker Show. I have guests on every week that are really terrific in the CX space. So when we hit our outro music, it's going to say see you next week at 12 o'clock. And that's what it's talking about. So join me live every Thursday at noon for the Experience Maker Live Show. Thanks again. Take care. Yeah.